Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Today we're joined by Alina Duarte, independent journalist and researcher. She's here to talk with us about Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador, who has recently made international headlines over the past several months with his bold stances and actions, which have challenged U.S. hegemony in Latin America and globally. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Alina. Thanks for inviting me, Soy. My pleasure. <laughs> well, to start off, the most recent uh, you know, incident of this is that uh, this week, AMLO uh, made a statement that he was going to raise the case of Julian Assange, who's the co-founder of WikiLeaks, publisher who is currently in prison in the UK. He's going to bring this, uh, the attention of the United States, the case of Julian Assange. He even said that the Statue of Liberty should be torn down if Julian Assange is convicted and sentenced in the United States. How can we understand this, this really bold stance against the US and where does it come from? Well, um, we need to start several years ago when precisely WikiLeaks revealed the, cons the conspiracy against him, against AMLO for many years. So he is very grateful uh, to him and to WikiLeaks uh, for showing this to the to the Mexicans, to the world, that he was not lying. You know, uh, all the media outlets here in Mexico were saying that AMLO was kind of crazy, saying that there was a conspiracy against him, including the U.S. embassy, and when. And uh, Julian Assange through WikiLeaks uh, showed all of this uh, in Mexico. Uh, it changed uh, the the relationship with the media. Uh, the Mexican uh, the Mexican people just uh, decided to believe him. So he's uh, really grateful to him and to WikiLeaks. And this is not the first time that he says something similar. Like this is like the second third time that he is uh, putting in the middle of the debate in Mexico. Uh, what does Julian Assange means to not only for Mexico but uh, for the rest of the world. Uh, he was saying that in the um, during the next week when he's gonna have this uh, visit to Washington with Joe Biden. Uh, he's gonna uh, ask him to uh, release and stop. Uh, persecuting uh, Julian Assange. Uh, I don't think this is going to happen, but of course uh, that uh, in Latin America and in the rest of the world, and also for journalists like you, like me, uh, it's very important what is going to happen with Julian Assange. And AMLO is conscious about that. Recently, I had the opportunity to interview also uh, Julian Assange's brother, and he was re uh, really grateful too with Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador uh, for asking uh, for the, the liberation of Assange. So um, it's not something new, uh, but I'm really happy to see a president like uh, AMLO now asking for the liberation of a journalist like, like Julia. I think it sets an extremely strong precedent and not many heads of state are doing that across the world. Um, another precedent setting statement by AMLO was recently uh, with regards to Summit of the Americas, and you, you and I were both in Los Angeles during um, this summit at the People's Summit for Democracy, and Biden's summit was essentially a failure, and I think largely that's due to the position of Andres Manuel López Obrador, who said that he wouldn't attend the summit. So can you talk about this decision to not attend the summit? Where did this come from? Yeah, well, I'm really impressed about these statements of Lopez Obrador. Three years ago, this would be have been impossible to hear of a president like like him. Uh, I think something changed in his uh, foreign policy after the coup in Bolivia. Remember, we had Evo Morales here exiled after uh, October uh, 2019. Uh, during the coup, he was exiled here, and I think something changed in the foreign uh, policy in Mexico. Uh, also, last year during the anniversary of uh, uh, Simón Bolívar. Uh, I remember this speech of AMLO uh, saying for the first time that we need another Latin America, uh, questioning the OAS, questioning uh, the role of the U.S. in the region. And uh, I think the Summit of the Americas, the Summit of the Exclusion was this uh, key point, you know, like when he uh, could show to the world what he is asking for the region and he was he what he's thinking for the next uh, years we don't have a re-election here in Mexico so uh, we are gonna have only three more years of AMLO's administration uh, so it's a very short time in a period of time 
to change, of course, the region. A lot have a, a lot of the the issues in the region have uh, changed uh, during these three years. Uh, also, uh, if we look uh, to the south, if we see what happened in Colombia, also in Honduras, what's gonna happen also this year in Brazil? We know that this plan is possible. Another uh, Latin America and the Caribbean is possible. So uh, the summit of the Americas shown this uh, leadership of me the Mexican government. I I have no doubt uh, about it that now uh, AMLO is uh, the leader of the region, questioning Luis Almagro, the OAS, the role of the U.S., the Monroe Doctrine, also questioning the U.S. about uh, freedom and democracy when it comes about uh, Julian Assange. So uh, I'm really happy to see that uh, things now after we had this so progressive, uh, so-called progressive governments from 2000, uh, from 1999 with Venezuelan President uh, Hugo Chavez until 2009, 10, when we saw also the return of the uh, right-wing governments through a uh, coup d'etat, through uh, a destabilization and things like 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 this. So now we're seeing another. Uh, uh, another cycle of uh, these so-called progressive uh, governments. And AMLO, it's uh, like naturally now the, the leadership of the region. So let's see what's gonna happen uh, with organizations like CELAC, like UNASUR, like uh, this, uh, another uh, organization, the organization that are uh, outside the, the the control the, the the U.S. regime, you know. So I think AMLO is conscious uh, about the role that Mexico is having in the region. With uh, his publicly, he's not saying anything about Venezuela, but we stopped attacking Venezuela. We were heading. We were the leaders of the attacks of Venezuela during the last administration on, under Enrique Peña's administration. Uh, the way yes, with the um, Cartel de Lima, el, el Grupo de Lima. And now uh, we are changing uh, all of our uh, foreign policy. So I think this this year, AMLO says during his uh, conference two weeks ago in the Mañanera, in the so-called Mañanera, that he was uh, actually saying that uh, Lula is going to win in, in Brazil. So I'm really happy to see that uh, the, there was a kind of block of governments supporting uh, this these questions to, to the U.S. Uh, imperialism through the leadership of a uh, Mexican president, uh, López Obrador. Well, and a lot of your work, Alina, as you've been covering over the past couple of years in AMLO's administration, his changes have not only been in his international policy, uh, but there have been a lot of important domestic efforts trying to bridge some of the historic uh, socioeconomic inequality in Mexico, trying to change some of the structure. Can you talk about some of these domestic policies, some of the reforms that he's tried to pass? What impact have these had on Mexican society? Yeah, um, it's not so different of what have been going on in Latin America for the last 20 years with the so-called progressive governments. We've seen the redistribution of the wealth of the government in Mexico through uh, social programs. And now people going to the school, to the middle school, school, the elementary school, high school, and even with the university. Now there are so many programs and there are more than 10 million of uh, people uh, older than 65 years old that now are receiving an economic uh, support. Uh, like most of the, the, the students the, in high school or in elementary school uh, are having access to these uh, social programs. Uh, I mean, there are so many programs that you can have access to. And after a pandemic, also we had a redistribution of the, um, of the health system. It's something that the president was saying that he was going to do before the pandemic. I mean, it was one of the promise that all, every single Mexican would have access to an hospital or a medical services. Uh, but with the pandemic, uh, there was a lot of um, invest 
in the hospitals, in, in every single issue about uh, the health system. Also with education, as I was saying, there are so many uh, programs uh, about that. And I think that, um, as I said, it, it's very similar of what was going on in Latin America with these governments. But I think that we need to think what's going to happen after that. It's not going to be enough. We saw this in Ecuador. We've seen this in Bolivia. It's not enough just having the support of the people or even having these social programs. What we need is to to, um, to debate. We need to build organizations, not to let the opposition to take the streets or the media outlets. For example, here I have always this debate that now that the Morena and AMLO are in government, what we should do with the with the public media outlets. So there are so many issues that are still on debate. Um, I'm sure that uh, in 2018, this was uh, the best op option, electoral option. And now the uh, what we need to think is this alliance, for example, with the feminist movements. Of course, there is a sector of liberal or even right-wing uh, feminists in this country, as in, in, in the rest of Latin America. Uh, there is a lot of feminists also that are contributing to the uh, social uh, the vision of, of, of what's going to happen with the so-called for transformation, la 4T, la, la Cuarta Transformación here in Mexico. So uh, also the relationship, I think it's on debate, the relationship uh, with the social movements, with the organizations. Uh, this is not like uh, the mass in, in Bolivia or now with the uh, Pacto Histórico in Colombia. Uh, this was just an alliance between the electoral projects with the parties in, 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 in the country, not with the, with organizations and social movements. Uh, there are still a lot of uh, depths, for example, with the indigenous movement, with one part of the indigenous movement, there is another that is uh, already having benefits with their territories, with negotiations, etc., uh, etc., et and. Um, uh, I think a lot of things have uh, changed. It's not going to be enough. We've seen this in Latin America during the last 20 years. It's not enough just uh, voting. Uh, we need to keep organizing. We need to transform uh, also uh, the, the public media outlets. Uh, we need to keep uh, thinking about what's going to happen after 2024 elections. Uh, in three years, AMLO it's not going to be in power anymore. And now, even uh, when we are uh, two years um, uh, for behind this election, I mean, uh, we have we have two years to think what's gonna happen. There are uh, now we we can see who are who wants to be uh, the the next candidate to succeed uh, succeed. Um, to be the next president in Mexico. So let's see what is gonna happen. So far, I think uh, there are, there have been uh, so many uh, change. Uh, I think the more uh, visible part of this administration is the foreign uh, policy, but also in the domestic uh, one, I think there have been so many changes. Definitely. And finally, as you mentioned before, uh, next week, Amlo is gonna be traveling to Washington to meet with Joe Biden. What are some of the key topics that they're going to be discussing at this meeting? Well, uh, of course, we have one main issue that it's migration. AMLO in these conferences has said that he's also going to uh, put in evidence the Congress, I mean, who are going to vote against this uh, immigration reform in the U.S. Uh, he's putting a lot of pressure. Also, uh, he said that he's going to ask Biden for visas for the um, for like people who wants to uh, who want to to work in the U.S. I think this is not only not it's not a concern only for Mexico for but for for Latin America, uh, and also uh, with this uh, issue against uh, uh, during this uh, war against. Uh, in, in Ukraine, uh, what we've seen is the uh, inflation, the economic inflation. So uh, AMLO said that he is going to ask for a plan uh, that benefits the whole region. Uh, also, he was asked during these past days the, what he's going to ask specifically on the issues on migration to Joe Biden. And he said that he's going to wait until the, the, the meeting. He's not going to uh, say what he's going to say. <laughs> but uh, 
uh, I think these are the main issues. Also, uh, I would I would love to uh, to listen that in this meeting they talk about, for example, gun violence, and um, you know the armed uh, traffic in our border is definitely one of the uh, key issues for us uh, for like understanding the violence that we are still uh, here in our country. The violence even is worse than a lot past administration, and it's something that we need to say because Andlo said that he's not going to continue this so-called war on drugs and uh, trying to kill every uh, narco in, in our country. So he stopped that. Uh, but at the same time, the, violent, uh, the violence in, in, in Mexico hasn't stopped. Uh, the violence against journalists, against women. We are a country with uh, 10 or 11 feminicides a day. So uh, the violence uh, hasn't stopped. It's something really, I don't know how, I, fortunately I'm not the president of, the, of Mexico because I, I don't know how to stop it. But um, that's why I would love to, to listen something about gun violence, about our armed trafficking in our borders specifically. Uh, we know that under Obama's administration and here in Mexico, it was Felipe Calderón, the president, uh, this uh, fast and uh, furious, uh, it was uh, the name of this uh, plan that the U.S. Uh, gave thousands of uh, guns. Uh, they tried to infiltrate guns through the border with the knowledge of the president. Um, and uh, at the end, they didn't uh, know where the arms were uh, until a uh, DEA, DEA uh, agent was killed with these arms. So we already know that all of these arm traffic is uh, finish in the in the hands of the uh, narco traffic here in Mexico. So it's something that I know it's um, it's very difficult to put in a debate between Mexico and U.S. because there are so many interests, the NRA or the uh, industrial armament complex, you know, it's so, so difficult. Um, and this is not something that it's still, or we don't know that they're gonna talk about this issue. Uh, also, I think regionally uh, talking, we have to listen something of, uh, after the the summit of the Americas, the summit of the exclusion. I'm really sure that they're going to talk about uh, the, uh, not specifically about the OAS, but definitely we need to listen something about uh, how the U.S. is going to still um participating or, you know, like, I don't know uh, how to say it because it's uh, what AMLO is asking is like to dismantle U.S. imperialism and it's not something uh, for a press conference, of course, but I think AMLO is going to say something about the region and uh, about Cuba, I think it's one of the main issues that AMLO has taken in his hand. In his hands, Cuba for him is so important. He has asked him for end the blockade several times. I think this is not gonna be the exception. So let's see. But I'm, 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 we are, we are sure so far that he's gonna talk about migration, about the economic inflation. Let's see if he says something about about uh, this um, regional solidarity and the role of the U.S. after the summit of the Americas. Uh, so uh, this is the main debates that are in the in the table of, of, of uh, Mexico and the U.S. Well, thank you so much, Alina, for that very informative report. And we'll definitely be coming back to you for more updates on how this visit went and what are the next steps for Mexico. So thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. My pleasure. Every single time that you invite me, I'll be here. So thank you.